And do you want to do you want to mention the mailing list if people aren't already on it, Amy? Um, yeah. So we um, I'm going to put a chat uh, a link in the chat box to the um, to our mailing list. So um, you're more than welcome to add yourself onto that and basically we send out one every month just all the updates about stuff going on with sailboat and um, it's a good way to keep in in uh, sort of touch base with us really um so i'll put that in the chat now and you can um sort it out afterwards or during but there we go um so you follow that link and you'll be able to add yourself to our mailchimp brilliant thanks amy and also on that link it's a bit of a contact form so if after this you wanted to follow up a bit more detail, ask about something a bit more, have a one-to-one -one chat, you could use that link to email us for the contact form as well. Um, we're happy to chat to people afterwards. Um, great, so I can see um, there's some people names I recognise, uh, the skippers, uh, instructors, uh, people I know at day skipper level, coastal skipper, a few names I don't recognise, volunteers, a nice mix of people, that's brilliant. So we'll hopefully draw on some individual's experiences as well, not just me droning on. Uh, to answer some people's questions. But first of all, um, do you mind launching that first poll, Amy? Yeah. So we, we, we've got a little poll here. It's just asking you, what's the, the next level that you're aiming at? So not maybe, not necessarily where you want to be in three or four years time, but what's kind of the next level that you're looking for in your kind of sailing progression? So it could be, um, you just want to be a more experienced crew. It could be you're aiming for day skipper qualification or coastal skipper it could be that you want to uh, sit a yacht master examination which isn't a course it's like a several hours exam it could be you want to go on to be an instructor um, so just if you want to have a look have a go at that poll and it'll just give us a sense of uh, who we've got and uh, what people are, are most interested in finding out about this evening uh, has that worked the poll yeah, is there anyone able just to unmute and just let us know if they can see the poll okay? Cannot see the poll. Let me try again. Okay. Here, I can do it here, Amy, I've got yeah, it. Yeah, I've clicked it, but it's not, there we go. Yeah. There we go. So. Yeah, if you could have a look at that and just think about what the next level is you you personally would like to be aiming for. Um, and as those come in, oh, we've got some coastal skipper. Uh, yacht master exams. And some instructors, people wanted to be instructors. One admiral, excellent. We have to work that one out itself. Great. So has everybody had a chance to Look at that, it looks like we've got, we're looking, people are interested in getting to coastal skipper and yacht master level and uh, some instructor levels. So, um, uh, does it seems like um, we don't really need to talk about crew or day skipper level. So I just give a chance, if anyone wants to unmute and let me and say, no, I want to know a bit more about day skipper, say now. Um, otherwise, it seems like we're going to be chatting a bit about the coastal skipper and the, the yacht master exams to start with, maybe. Um, yeah, cool. So, um, do you want to just show the uh, flowchart, Amy? Share that onto the screen. Yeah. So, this is just uh, that's the one. So this is just a, a little diagram, you might have seen it before, that just shows how some of the practical courses and the theory courses and the Yacht Master exams kind of fit together. Um, so we can see in there that um, the Coastal Skipper kind of expects that you've done a, a, a navigation theory course to kind of what's called RYA Coastal Skipper Yacht Master Theory. So the names, a lot of the terminology can be a bit a bit of a mouthful with some of these ones, but it's um, the Coastal Skipper um, Yacht Master Theory course gives you the, the theory navigation skills that you'll need uh, for the Coastal Skipper course, which is quite a kind of um, 
intense um intense level course and it you could consider that it kind of sets you up a little bit to be ready for a, a yacht master examination um but it's not really advice you know the way i rules advise it it's not like you do a five-day coastal skipper course and then sit your yacht master exam it's kind of um but it kind of gets you gets you a lot of the skills in that level um one say i'd say one thing i'd say about this flow chart is you don't necessarily have to do each course after the other um and all of the RYA syllabus is, is written that you have kind of an assumed yeah. knowledge and, and an assumed yeah. level of experience. Um, so do you mind scrolling down just to the, the next diagram? Brilliant, Amy. So here it gives you, an, it tells you in, in detail um, what the assumed knowledge is for each course. So if we look at the Coastal Skipper practical, it assumes that you've got navigation to um, Coastal Skipper Shore Base Standard. So it assumes you've done that theory. You don't have to have done the theory course. You could have self-taught, you could have had a set of navigation exercises, but it's assuming that. It's not gonna have kind of the capacity to teach you the theory while you're on the course. Um, and it also assumes that you can, you can sail and skip for a boat to kind of day skipper level. Um, so, Seeing there's a few people there showing showing an interest in wanting to get to this next level. I know there are some people here who've recently done a coastal skipper. I think Harry, Harry, are you here? I wonder if hello. you know. Hello, yes, Harry. Harry. Hi there. Yeah, sorry I'm late. I was having some technical issues. Don't worry. With the old, uh, don't worry. Don't worry. Hello. Good to be here. Do you uh, mind unsharing unsharing the um the the graphic there, Amy? In a sec. We'll go back to Wicked. And I just wonder, do, do you feel up for just saying a bit about what we did on the Coastal Skipper practical course I think last autumn, wasn't it, Harry? Like just give people an idea of what we cover in it. Yeah, yeah, no, it was about sort of last November. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, it was quite windy and just sort of a re-solidification of some of the day skipper stuff and then just kind of adding to that some more navigational kind of um techniques and and just sort of yeah better kind of decision making um sort of practicing maneuvers like man overboard and delegating and kind of um and just better ways to 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 do to do it um and yeah i found it very rewarding very good course um and some challenges and conditions so it was it's a good stepping stone for yacht master which is my sort of next target and and what kind of what kind of um, theory did you have under your um, under your belt before the course, Harry? Uh, well, obviously, yeah, with uh, sort of dinghy instructing um, kind of level, and then also sort of powerboat instructor, sort of theory wise in terms of passage planning and um, so signal identification um, and pilotage, but. Um, Obviously, you only sort of get so much time in the courses. So, uh, yeah, I could. Uh, that was working on that more in the coastal skipper um, and trying to refine it a bit better, maybe make it more detailed. Yeah. So that's what's always I was trying to push more to be better at that. Um, and yeah, and just sort of seamanship ability, I think. Yeah, so I think one of the things that marks out coastal skipper. Uh, as opposed to day skipper. Day skipper, we might, for example, show you like a crew overboard exercise, give everybody a chance to to practice and have a go. And that's how we do it with day skipper. I think with the, the coastal skipper, it's like, it's got to work, it's got to ace it. And I think we did quite a bit of that, especially on the last day, didn't we, Harry? And it's yes. like, if we're not feeling at all confident at that level, well, let's work on that and focus on it. And it's, it's you know, getting a bit more... Uh, Intense, detailed, shall we say. Um, so one of the things it's, I think it's, it may be that people um, are getting the chance to do that kind of stuff for the first time on the Coastal Skipper Practical Course. It, it could definitely be useful to have a, make sure you have a bit of time on the water before a course like that. So you're kind of making the most of, of that level, um, I would say. Now, one of the, just to point out, like one of, when you, one of the benefits of something like a coastal skipper practical course or some of the theory courses is it can shave off 
um, some of the miles that you need to then go on to your yacht master examination. So we'll talk about those in a bit, but they kind of have little little rewards in, in a way, some of, some of these courses. And you can see what the RYA is doing here, it's trying to encourage you to, to go through the scheme as much as possible. Um, is there any anybody else here who's recently or, or has done a um, it's kind of a coastal skipper level recently you might want to say something about that those courses or is there any 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 direct questions about coastal skipper level maybe for many of the people who are looking looking to do it yeah how um how long is it then how long does it take to do it I was just thinking that so uh, it's a five day course. It's five days on the water. There's quite a bit more night hours. Um, and um, yeah, it's a five day course, basically. Same as you would have for your, your day skipper. But I think it's fair to say that there's a lot more, a lot more going on, isn't there, Harry? It's a lot more sort of homework and stuff. Um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's certainly the next level. The day skipper, you know, everyone's doing a, a little bit, but there's just not as much, um, you know, not say pressure but the you know pushing to kind of really get it right like you said Dara to kind of you know not kind of maybe in, when I was doing my day skipper you know there's got sort of four or five students and everyone's still learning a bit so and then obviously it takes it time to get through that with coastal skipper everyone's at least you know coming in with a bit more of a grounding um, and so you can kind of you know doing the man overboards and the drills and how tiring that can be. And but so sort of trying to get it right, not have to do it too many times. Um, so yeah, Coastal Skippers um, certainly was yeah, the next step up. I mean, the, my day skipper was years ago um, and just time in a boat is really needed to, I think, prepare for that and doing it. Um, and being a, more of a ding instructor at the moment, I didn't have had as much, but the Coastal has really helped to get back into it and get my head in it and obviously see what areas need work um, and extra sort of, and when I do get the chance to, to really hone that so I can get more ready for the next uh, step. Yeah. And the um, we, we run piece. our, sorry, go on. Sorry. The navigation piece that you talked about, uh, the pre-course or the level that I expect you to be at, is that the day skipper navigation one or is that another one? No, that's it's called Coastal Skipper and Yacht Master Offshore Shore Based, which is a bit of bit of a mouthful. Um, mm. So um, where they where they're going to is that is it's um, it's it's less of an introduction to things. It's really um, trying to put every everything together, um, all the different elements together. It's you're getting into um, your navigation within like you know a few three or four degrees accuracy uh, it's trying to get your your um i mean these, these are all based on tidal predictions and stuff in the real world it's often a bit different but um it's getting things to within a, in just a few minutes of, of tidal prediction so it's kind of trying to take away a lot of the um um errors that might creep in on the theory course um there's a lot more detail about weather because it's trying to equip you with the skills if you're offshore even though it says coastal skipper practical what that could mean coastal skipper could be going across line bay well you're on your own for 40, 40 miles or so so trying to just have a sense of of um, what's going on with the weather and reading depressions and uh, to help you work out when you should be reefing and, and things like this so it goes into a lot more detail on that um but is there anybody here who's done the coastal skipper theory recently um who might want to say anything Oh, Molly's got a hand up here. Is that a question from Molly? Oh, no, sorry. Um, I had my hand up. Then you answered my question. I was okay. going to say, what, what, what does the theory course encompass? But you've kind of, yeah. you've kind of answered that. Sorry. So I could Dara, say... It's, it's, it's Oliver. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, d I did the, the theory before I did the five-day coastal skipper with Harry last year, and it was um, supremely beneficial. Okay takes a lot longer they said the recommended study time was about 40 hours but i did it on the weekends obviously during i'm um, in between family and work and stuff and so i did it over a period of about three months which i found really beneficial to do okay. in time uh there's 12 modules and so i kind of took almost like i did like a weekend per module in that sense and sort of worked through it in that way um and it was 
it was a, a good foundation from which to then leap into the practical sense because you, you were able to connect the dots in, in the real world from, from the theoretical. So it was sort of a, yeah, I found it quite beneficial to, to run through that. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, it is, it is quite an intense course. There's, um, there's three exam papers at, at the end, if I remember rightly. Um, and yeah. if, you yes. want, if you want to go on and be a commercially endorsed skipper, so even at day skipper level, you can be commercially endorsed like within a harbour. At coastal skipper level, you can be commercially endorsed, so taking out um, paying customers in an area like the Solent, you can endorse those licences. So if when you do your theory course, you've got an invigilator, someone watching it, then that helps in that process as well. Um, yeah, if you look like you've, you're going to... Yes, it's just, <laughs> that I, it's just that you can't commercially endorse Coastal Skipper. Um, oh, yes, you're right. You, it's you, the, the options are Day Skipper or Yachtmaster Coastal and Yachtmaster Offshore. Um, if, if you are, if you are, um, if you have a uh, coastal skipper, um, that's, that's great, you, but you also need your day skipper and you can endorse that. Um, it's not, um, I mean, the reason is that you don't get to have a higher level of um, area that you're able to operate <laughs> distance offshore, whether you're able to operate at night, those sort of things, until you get to uh, at one of the yacht master levels. Yes, thank you for that correction, Jeff. It does get complicated. What's possible and stuff. Um, Molly, is that is that another hand up? It is another question. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. No, don't um, apologize. Go for it. I was just wondering what the difference was between yacht master coastal and coastal skipper. Jeff mentioned them as separate things. Right. Well, should we move on a bit to the yacht master examinations then? So. Um, You've done you've done your coastal skipper practical course. Um, generally, in learning, like one thing I would always recommend to people is have something like a um, your own little learning journal, a little A5 binder or something. And how when I was actively really trying to learn from kind of you know day skipper and above, I would be making my own perspectives of things that were going on when I was sailing with other skippers using things like find a crew, crew seekers, get out, sailing with other people, and um, just uh, actively try and use those learning things like reflecting on what you've done. So we went out today, it all went really well. It was amazing. Um, why, how, <laughs> what actually happened? Oh yeah, we all knew what we were doing and stuff. But we went out today and the halyard got tangled and all this, and what, what on earth happened there? Oh yeah, this went wrong. So. That thing of reflecting after some sailing is a really good, good quality. Um, and another thing is visualising. This is what they tell sort of Olympic athletes, but I think it's useful on two levels. So you've just been out, you've had a really, really great sail and you're lying there in your bunk and you're absolutely knackered. Just thinking through what happened, like a little movie, running it through in your head can be quite a useful way. Sometimes you're not quite sure why certain things went on. There can be a lot happening on a boat. That little reflection thing, the visualising as a skipper is thinking about what's coming up the next day. So I'm sure a lot of people here will be familiar with that idea of got a bit of a trip starting the next morning. You've got to get up and catch the tide and you may be a bit worried about the weather. But in another way, just in your head, just thinking, right, so we're going to do this. We're going to go out there. Then we're going to come around that headland. Oh, yeah, that's probably going to be a bit windier. Right. Let's just go back a bit. We'll put a reef in before we go around that headland. So that kind of idea of playing it again like a movie, but a forward movie in your head is, is quite a useful, a useful thing. And that I think it really helps as you go go up a level, whichever level you're going on. Trying to think like that helps you uh, not come unstuck. So sorry, sort of actively thinking of bad scenarios or something that might happen and what you should do to preempt it. Yeah, not even bad scenarios, but it's like, right, we're going to, you know, the wind, you know, just thinking about what the forecast is, as we come around this corner, oh, yeah, it's going to pick up a bit more. Um, things that are probably quite obvious, but if you're just thinking about it um, in your head, then you can give really good instructions to your crew. So it's like, um, I think we'll probably want to reef in or stuff. Well, let's get the main up in, in this tiny little harbour by the marina get it all nice and properly reefed and tight and then we'll head out 
instead of going out and it's all a choppy choppy sea and it's like, oh god why didn't we do the main earlier you know and just thinking it through in your head either in advance or reflecting afterwards i find a really useful way of um pointing out things like oh yeah and so then we'll be doing this bit and then well, i don't know we'll be picking up and it'll be a bit bouncy but we'll be good oh god we'll be hungry right rewind let's make sandwiches and put them in a tupperware box you know it's fairly basic stuff but um that visualizing reflecting thing is quite helpful for that so moving on to the yacht master exams this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated but not too much so coastal skipper is the last practical course that the rwa offers after that it's um well there's a there's a higher level theory course which is the the ocean one it's using the sextant and um you know longer uh, longer passages planning but in terms of the yacht master exams um these are all eight to 12 to maybe 14 maybe a bit more that 14 hour they're like they're long day examinations and basically you arrange to have an examiner come on board um you've got a boat you've got a crew hopefully you've worked together before <laughs> hopefully it's a boat you've been on before um and the examiner will be there and what they're like you know we can you know that, that varies a bit but they're basically there to kind of observe you um which is a bit unnerving um they will at a certain point sit you down away from your crew and test you you need all your lights and shapes you just gotta have it you know just learn that don't let that become a thing and they want to see your kind of crew and boat management they're going to ask you to sail onto things um a crew of a board exercise quite likely there'll be an engine failure so you've got to do it by sail you've got to find a piddly little light in the middle of nowhere at night um and you just kind of got to keep it together really so there's three different well there's two there's two there's two ones for these purposes there's the yacht master coastal and the yacht master offshore and you um they have different um qualifying experiences basically so um they, they each have different levels of time you need to have been at sea so if you're going to do the yacht master coastal you need to have done 30 days this is all minimum 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 but you know 30 days at sea a couple of them are skipper um you've got to have clocked up about 800 nautical miles and done 12 night hours that's what they're they're asking for if you're going to go for the yacht master offshore examination they want more sea time 50 days five days of skipper already two and a half thousand miles at sea and crucially, they want five passages that are over, over 60 nautical miles. So that's pretty much a channel crossing from the Solent. So they want at least five of them that you've been on, two of them that you've skippered, um, and a couple of them that have been overnight. So there's quite a high level of previous experience that they're, ex they're expecting. Now, if you've done the coastal um, skipper, the no, practical course, then they will reduce the qualifying mileage a bit. I'm not gonna get into the details. We can send that out afterwards, but it reduces it a little bit. So you can kind of see what they're sort of saying. If you've been on that Coastal Skipper practical course, you they, they kind of see that you've maybe learned a bit more, but um, well, hopefully learned a bit more, but um, I wouldn't see these as, as bare minimums. Like the mileage is one thing and it can take a bit to catch up on those miles um but they they want you to be really proficient skipper really is what they're looking at and it might be that you go, go out to do the yacht master offshore examination and then they decide that they're they're going to give you the coastal instead so that's one sort of way that an examiner can use it to help you sort of progress really and you might be doing the examination with one other candidate on board the so things could get mixed up a little bit um so I don't know, is there anybody here who's, who's got a, a memory of doing their Yacht Master exam who might want to share some of their experience and how they found it? Um, I mean, I can remember mine, it was really quite daunting. 
Um, Craig, uh, I think Craig has, has got mm. to share. Uh, oh, brilliant. Yes, Craig. Um, yes, a um, couple of things. Um, prior to me doing my Yacht Master exam, I actually managed to black my way onto a Yacht Master exam as a, as a crew member. Great. Great. Um, and and it, I learned a lot that weekend. Um, generally, people do a, a three-day prep um, course leading up to the exam at the end of the week. Um, but what was interesting, being crew, I could observe how the examiner ran the course and what he was looking for. And what came very apparent is they're looking for you to be almost like a project manager. They, they don't expect you to be holding on to dear death of, on the wheel because you can't do all the jobs you've got to do. So you have, they want to see you organizing the crew, planning the route, and doing all the sort of administrative tasks to get there safely rather than you sell the boat. Obviously, they're going to look for you to do some drills like man overboard, docking the boat, those sort of things. But once you're at sea and you, you're going to this mark in, in the other side of the solar, for example, they want to see you navigating, making sure you're watching out for other shipping, uh, you're not going to sail across a sandbar, all those sort of things. So you can get very busy. And what they particularly don't like is you running up and down, down to the chart and back on the deck, down to the chart, back to the deck because that's showing that you're not confident in what you're doing. So it's all about planning your, your passage plan and knowing where you're going. And the biggest tip I can give you in terms of knowing where you're going, try and get some experience in the area that you're gonna be doing the exam. So if it's in the Solent, get as much experience sailing the Solent and get to know all the boys. Because invariably they're able to ask you to go to one of the racing boys, for example. So if you can, get on a boat as a member of a crew for a season who are doing racing and get to know the boys and know the environment. And that will de-stress the whole process of the exam because you'll have that mental image of where everything is. And all you're doing is verifying on your chart and your, your project plan where you are. So it's a way of de-stressing the whole situation is just knowing where you are. And it's all about your preparation and planning. Um, the other thing is to use your crew to help you. you know, if you can't find a mark in the dark of that flashing light with a particular sequence, get them to find it for you. It's quite acceptable to use your crew to do those jobs. So don't expect you to find every flashing boy out there and do all the planning, watching for shipping and so on. So use your crew mates on the boat to do those mundane tasks um, and give yourself the time and the breather. The other thing, I was on a boat where someone failed because they stopped observing the depth and they actually sailed over a sandbar. Yet the crew were telling the person that the depth was getting less and they were so panicking about where they were and where, where they were going. They weren't listening to the crew either. So the crew will help you listen to them, the feedback they're giving. Um, so it's all about the preparation and, and de-escalating the pressure. Because a lot of the pressure comes from your, from within rather than the task itself, because you will no doubt would have done it already. Um, so basically try and get out in the boat, sail around the, the area at night and in the day as much as you can at the lead up to the exam. Um, and if you can do the prep the, uh, week before, that will, ha will help with that. You know, sail up the handle on, on the leading lights, for example. Go up Bewley River and work out the tides. Know, you know where all the shallow spots are. All those sort of things you can do outside of the exam um, scenario. And that will help you in the exam because you've done it before and you're not, you're not doing something for the first time. So there's quite a lot there, but um, it, it's just preparation, preparation. Thank you, Craig. That's really helpful advice. Um, Mike, I think Amy, you're just trying to tell us, Amy, we're halfway through. Yeah, just, you, yeah, just letting you know that we're halfway. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Go on, Mike. Yeah. What's... I suppose I can echo some of those comments that Craig's just made. Um, I did my yacht master offshore last year. Um, the one thing I did slightly differently is I, I sail in the Solent a lot 
Um, and I used to sail 30 years ago in Plymouth. Uh, but I just thought it'd be quite fun to go and do my yacht masters down there rather than do it in the Solent. So I took a different view that I wanted to challenge myself a little bit and go to somewhere that was slightly unfamiliar. But I did do the, the five days prep course first. So I thoroughly knew the boat. Um, so if you're not doing a yacht master exam on the boat you sail regularly and you're doing it on a, a club boat or a um, charter boat, it's really worth knowing the boat well. Because the, uh, the the examiner, I think he said within about half an hour, um, he said, I know you can sail. We'll just get on to all the bits we have to do. Um, it didn't take long to show confidence because the boat handled as you expected it to. And you work with the crew that you've been, you got to know during the week. Um, my course was, um, it was good. Um, there's only, there's, <laughs> it ended up being two of us on the course. There were three at the start, but the first person left after day two um, for various reasons. It's a long story. Um, but what it meant was myself and the other guy had a, a good chance to gel and we worked well as a team. And I think the examiner saw that straight off. Um, and the other guy decided he didn't want to go for the, for the exam in the end. He'd, he'd done all the prep week and he was thinking of doing the Yachtmaster Coastal, um, but decided not to. He didn't want to put himself under the pressure. Um, but he just stayed on as my crew for the weekend, which was quite handy. Um, the downside was I then had to do the full exam um, and be the only one examined. And the examiner did it. Um, it was very nice, actually. He, they're, very, they're very helpful. They don't put you under a lot of pressure until they really have to. Um, but he understood that um, only having one person on the boat being examined meant it was an eight-hour stretch for me from start to finish and I was the only one under pressure the whole time like the crewmate got to run around make tea and uh, make supper and all that sort of stuff um but uh yeah getting familiar with the area was quite a useful one the the pre-prep course um the instructor for that course took us to all the points in Plymouth Sound where he said oh the examiner might take you to here make sure you know how to get to this point make sure you know how to get to that point um and and that sort of thing so again that was all really helpful um the actual exam i didn't think was um i wouldn't say it was hard it's, it's self pressure because if you if you've done your miles and you have to do quite a few miles before you get to the offshore one um you know you can sail the boat it's not about sailing the boat it's about how you manage your crew how you plan things how you cope with situations and there was a lot of questions about um, right, your queue's just fallen overboard, what are you going to do? So you have to jump into your offshore safety, all the other bits and pieces that you have to think about. Um, so it's very much not about the sailing, it's more about the, the management of the boat um, and crew around you and, and emergency situations, that sort of thing. Um, there's also the element of um, the electronic nav. Um, he did uh, a couple of exercises where he said your electronic nav's failed. Um, you had to resort back to basics. Um, he also gave me a um, very difficult buoy to find in the middle of the Plymouth Sound um, with no light on it. That was the, one of the night exercises. Um, so I said, I'll just use the radar and find it with the radar and do it that way. And I heard him say to my crewmate, so I, was, I had to do it downstairs blind, um, just using the radar, because that's how I've chosen to do it. He said, we'll never find that buoy. <laughs> you can't do it, but actually you can if you know how to use your radar. Um, so the, the examiners, they don't have to test you on radar, but they can ask you about it. So it's worth, um, even if you don't do a full one day radar course, getting to know how to use a radar, how to use your chart plotter, um, how to plot courses on it and understanding what the chart plot is really giving you because they're expecting you to be able to use these things these days. It's not just about the paper chart. Um, so there's a, a couple of tips from, from my experience. That's great, Mike. Thank you. I think on that what if kind of thing, if the, when the examiner was saying what would happen if, this is where the kind of reflecting and the visualising thing is quite good because it keeps you in that state of mind. And also the thing about keeping a, a little logbook because you could have done your miles but not actively been learning while you're doing it. So trying to process that as you're doing your miles. Um, it's great to do these prep courses, but also just having access to a boat and getting out there is is also good but stretch yourself so you know have the engine running 
but see how far you can sail back into harbour or the marina, you know, stretch yourself each time that you're out there a little bit. And the thing about knowing the area is really good advice, because if you think it's a 12 hour exam, roughly, well, make sure you know everywhere within six hours and you've, you've gone in and out of those places. And I think with the planning as well, I mean, it should be what we do anyway, but, you know, have everything written down. It's not cheating to have worked out all the tidal curves for everywhere and all the heights of tide and stuff. Um, just be super, super prepared. And one thing that's quite useful, and this is maybe going on to kind of instructor level as well, it's like narrate what you're doing because it shows an understanding. Um, and it can also help with your nerves, I think, if you're just calmly saying what you're doing and why you're doing it, um, that, can, that can sometimes be useful in that kind of exam scenario when someone stood on the backstay uh, hanging off it behind you. Are there any other questions about the Yacht Master exams? I believe we have somebody, Jeff, you've written about your exam, <laughs> which is quite useful. Yes, sorry, I, I was uh, taken away there. My mother's in hospital. I had a, I mean, she, I think she's okay now, but I had a phone call about it, so I had to take that. So I don't really know what you've just been talking about because I wasn't. Sorry, here. Jeff, didn't mean to put uh, you on the spot, but that's I was okay. Just that's okay. You wrote, you wrote your article. That's just what I had in mind. Yes. So I mean, I talked very briefly about that. I'm, I apologise if I cover anything that Dara's uh, just said. So. Um, I, I did uh, the Yachtmaster exam for uh, Yachtmaster Coastal um, because I only had a certain number of miles at that point um, and it wasn't enough to do Yachtmaster offshore. Um, and yeah, and the, the exam was, uh, it was just me and uh, it, it, it lasted, I think it only lasted about eight hours or something, uh, something like that. Um, and it took took place entirely at night because it was uh, winter um, and uh, mostly around uh, Portsmouth, Portsmouth Harbour um, and we did some pilotage, uh, we did uh, some sailing on and off buoys, we did man of board, we did a, an exercise where he um, <clears throat> chose a spot on the map and said navigate your boat to exactly that point, anchor there and then we'll check it on the GPS. So um, I, you know, I had to decide how I would how I would determine that I was in that exact spot. I I wasn't allowed to use electronics. Uh, it was checked with the GPS afterwards. So we did that. I mean, it was it was around in uh, Portsmouth. It was just outside Portsmouth Harbour, actually. And so there were all sorts of lights that I could do a fix on. So that's uh, how that was achieved. Um, yeah, and the, the whole thing was quite nerve wracking and it, you know, went on right into the night and um, I was asked questions on a very regular basis uh, about anything and anything nautical that he noticed or could think of, like, you know, what, so what's that flag signify? That sound we just heard, what, what was that the sound signal for, you know, and uh, those boats over there, who's, so who, who do you think's got, who, who's, uh, who's the stand on vessel there? That, that sort of thing. And then at the end, at about 3.30 in the morning, I had to do an exam on the lights and shapes uh, on an iPad. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, that, that's uh, a little bit about my experience there. I, you know, I did find it quite gruelling, but I was very pleased to have passed it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a high level. It's a high level to pass, definitely. It's not for the light-hearted. <laughs> um, great. Um, I think when you're doing your exams as well, and also when you're instructing, it's okay to be wrong as well. So if you do mess something up, go, ah, well, I've misjudged that. Or, you know, if you spot something, you don't have to be like rabbit in the headlights. Go, hang on, we're just, we're going to hove to and think about this, or we're going to go around again. You know, you don't have to be perfect every time because, funnily enough, no one is. Um, and I think it's much more honest if, you, if you're able to kind of say, hang on, this isn't going to plan or something's not right here. Let's go back to that last boy, as we would do anyway, skippers, and go, what's, what's going on here? Um, if things don't quite make sense, so it's, it's okay to do that. Um, should we chat a bit about the going on to instructor level as well? Because there's a couple of people who said they're interested in getting their cruising instructor or yacht master instructor. 
So um, these again are well. These the how these work is they're they're um, five day courses, four and a half day, um, and how they both work now is um, you have to have a yacht master. Um, I think it needs to be offshore, um, and you have to have got various other tickets. Um, give give it a sec, Mike, and um, um, you have uh, the course is split between you have about three days with um, one instructor, and then you have a moderator, someone else who comes on, um, which is kind of quite nice in a way to have different people. Um, and they will give you lots of um, lots of feedback as you go along. Um, and the main difference is that the cruising instructor, once you have that ticket, you can deliver up to day skipper level on the RYA syllabus. And when you have the yacht master instructor, you can deliver coastal skipper as well. It used to be that when you had Yacht Master Instructor, you could deliver the theory courses, but now they've done a thing where you need a different ticket to deliver theory courses. Um, so that's kind of changing. Because um, if you think about it, you know, just because you've got your Master Instructor, it doesn't mean you're regularly teaching in a classroom, or if you're teaching in a classroom, it doesn't mean you're regularly teaching on the water. So they're just trying to get a bit more standards, I guess, in there. Um, so, um, I believe we've got some people who've well does any anybody want to talk about doing doing their cruising instructor courses and, and what they were like um or did or mike sorry you had your hand up mike what, what did you want to say yeah just uh on your uh gotta try to remember what the clarification was um oh you need to be offshore commercially endorsed that's it so you, yeah. you've got to have done your ppr your safety the offshore safety um your first aid and there's a fourth thing which escapes me for the moment. Now. VHF. VHF. So you have to have VHF, yes. And um, I don't think you need to have radar, but it's also a useful thing to have. Um, so yeah, just I, say what PPR is, Mike. It's the professional um, practices and responsibilities. Yeah. It's, so, oh, go on. It's quite. Um, it's an online um, course. Some people say it's really boring. I found it really, really interesting as a then chief instructor of, of a sailing school. It was really useful to see all the level of detail of other levels of operations. It is a bit of a drone, but um, uh, you have to go through that. And there's lots of, um, you have to click on things three times to progress to the next level. It's a bit, <laughs> bit of a thing, but um, it gives you a view of the, the wider world beyond sailing. I think it's quite useful. I think the PPR was particularly useful. Um, for understanding the legality of what you can do, what you can't do, what a coded boat is all about, um, yeah. when you can charge for your services, when you can't charge for your services, um, and what and those sort of things. I thought that was um, quite useful um, part of the course. But if you wanted to um, a little bit about the cruise instructor course, I did mine in November last year. Um, that was a, it's just as you say, it was a four day course with one instructor. And then a, another day on the Friday, we had a different instructor who came on and did some of the same sort of exercises. And there were four students on that one. And each day we, we were given at least one practical task um, to teach and at least one theory session, typically that you might um, deliver in the boat on an evening after you've had your supper you know, do the 10 minute conversation or 20 minute conversation on weather or do the um, recap on compass corrections, um, that sort of thing. Uh, so each of us were given those sort of tasks to do. We had to deliver, the, deliver, deliver them to the rest of the group. Um, so there's quite a, quite a lot of that um, to get done. Um, we had a quite a difficult week in that we didn't have an awful, awful lot of wind. Um, so we did quite a lot of motoring in the yacht. Um, and when it did, have a bit of wind we, we obviously did the sail to boys um man overboard and that sort of thing to demonstrate that we could all do it and teach the demonstration as well and it's the verbalization of what you're doing and and, and mentoring the student which is really what he's looking again for it's a bit like the yacht master offshore he's not there to test whether you can sail he's looking to whether you can teach and impart the knowledge in a good way to the people who are 
trying to manoeuvre the boat or trying to do things and being a bit stressed out about becoming day skippers and that sort of thing. Um, so he's looking at your mannerisms as much as anything else and your teaching skills. Um, I actually failed, not actually fail, they don't fail you um, if you don't get everything quite right. Um, they come up with action plans now. So even on your day skipper or your coastal skipper, you might get to the end of the week and instead of a full pass, you get an action plan that you have to go and do something different or prove something again, come back and show that you've done that. Um, and mine was only because we, we had uh, four days of no wind. And then on the fifth day, when the other instructor was on board, we had a gale force five blowing and I got the demonstrate uh, Maneri, mani, marina maneuvering <laughs> and on a boat that you haven't done much of that in the week with a lot of wind that was it didn't go inch perfect and I was only one meter out from the pontoon in, in the end and he said if the chief instructor at the school had been watching that demonstration would you have would he think that was a good demo and even I said well it was fantastic up until the last three or four meters of the boat going backwards and I just fell short I was a little bit off the pontoon we blew onto it perfectly. It was okay. For a yacht master, it had been fine. But as an instructor given a demo, it wasn't fine. So the level of your sailing ability has to really, really be spot on when you start going for the instructor type courses. And in the lead up to the course, I challenged myself to sail with 20 different skippers to find out all their different techniques and learn from different people and try and get on as many different boat types as I could. So I wasn't just, you know, I knew my own boat quite well uh, up until a year and a half ago when I had one. And then I went into a club where they had two different types of boat. I got all my friends, sailing colleagues, got on their boats to try and broaden the experience. Because again, as an instructor, they're looking for somebody who doesn't just know a 35 foot standard sailboat, but you might have to go and instruct on a 28 footer or 45 foot or something like that. So it's getting that breadth of experience, I think, is really important for, for the when you get into the instructing side of things. So that was, someone else might want to add their bit now. That's great. Hi. Thanks. Hi, it's Craig here. Um, yeah, I just want to um, emphasize the, the, the level of skill and the, the ability to repeat a task um, over and over. Um, when you've got a group of students watching you do a, a man overboard, uh, you need to hit, do it correctly the first time because your students will actually remember you're doing it wrong and then they will try and replicate the wrong procedure they're learning by watching what you're doing so that there's quite a strong emphasis on the course on the cruising instructor course i did in being able to do that man over maneuver correctly every time and first time and that could be on a boat you've never sailed um you know i step on to a new boat nearly every weekend teaching. And I have to go and deliver that man overboard every time. And I, I can't go out and practice beforehand. So it's having that level of confidence that you can quickly get used to a boat and how it works without ever doing the actual task beforehand. So you haven't got the opportunity to rehearse anything. Um, and the other thing was um, in terms of the theory obviously being quite sharp on your theory because students will be asking you at, at random times all sorts of questions so you, you need to know the theory quite in depth and um, I actually had to get sometimes go away and do a bit of uh, swatting up and then go back with the answer rather than trying to deliver the answer straight away um, my favorite technique is let's get the book out and have a look at it see you go and find it first <laughs> So it's my way of stalling when I'm just trying to make sure I get it right in my own head. So, you know, you're not going to be perfect every time, but try to avoid giving the wrong answer because that's what will get remembered. Um, and the demo is the same. That's great, Craig. And I think on the, those kind of details, when I said earlier, it's OK to, to get things wrong when you're doing maybe your master exam and to take a step back and then correct it. It's okay to not know as an instructor or to have a brain jam and go, well, um, well, obviously on some things you definitely need to know, but if there's a very technical thing, it's like, well, where would we find that information? And I'm always like, it's, it's in the almanac and turn it into a session on how do you work your way around the almanac? Um, there's always the odd thing that you, you can't remember. 
I think at the instructor level as well, what they're looking for is that you've got the good communication techniques and you want to try and come to that course with some teaching aids. So bring, don't expect it all to be on the boat. It's just going to be a standard charter boat. So come with a whiteboard, come with some little boat models, um, even just from an old almanac to have taken um, some bits like the, you know, the lights and shapes section and cut them out and laminate them. Just, just come with something, even though you're not actively teaching, because it will help you. Um, so if you get that, right now we'd like you to deliver a little session about radar or lights and shapes you've got some little tool and they, they will kind of like that really and also it'll help you if you're doing the showing your fellow <laughs> you know the sort of people who are being your know, pretend students on the course you, you you talk about how it's going to work and you talk it through together that helps you kind of um get your get yourself lined up for whatever activity they're going to get you to do when you do get the cruising instructor ticket and the yacht master instructor ticket, there's a, um, a revalidation every five years, and they are generally two days on board, um, and they're checking that you've been using the ticket and you've been out teaching, and they're starting to give you a little bit more, and it's a nice opportunity as well to you know to start focusing on some of the um, the, the more thorny issues you might get with people learning and and so they're, they're you know they're quite um they're quite useful on that kind of level really um so any any questions that have been in the chat box at all amy that you might have missed I'm not sure um, there was just one from molly um just asking what crew finder websites people recommend because all the ones that um they've been on have been a bit dodgy mm. so does anyone have any recommendations for molly I someone would say, Paul. sorry, oh, go for it. Someone called Paul messaged me um, and said Crew Seekers was good. Uh, my problem is I'm a student on a student budget. So I, I've got to, I've got to kind of trade off between um, money and dodginess, I think. So do you mean in terms of having to, to pay to, to get access on those kind of yeah. sites? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I must admit, from the other point of view, when you when you do have a boat, you kind of you can it's free then to use, and it really flips it. You can kind of see you can choose. There's lots of interesting people to choose from, yeah. but um, yeah, no, I remember I remember that kind of thing. But if you if you're open to being contacted, so say you, you're on there as a boat owner, you can see quite a few people, um, and they can inquire, and uh, as long then you can sort of start opening opening the dialogue really. So I guess it's just trying to, um, not necessarily listing loads of qualifications because it doesn't necessarily mean things, but what you're looking for, what, what you want to gain would be quite engaging, I think, to a skipper or a boat owner to say, oh, this person's really, so they're sort of switched on and they're in sort of interesting learning mode. It's sort of making yourself um, uh, stand out a bit, I guess, and I send those inquiries on those sites because I, I think you, you don't have to pay just to show an interest or something. You do, yeah. Do now. Oh God, okay. Um, so there's yeah. a few hands. There's a few hands up here. What about um, Craig first, and then Mike? Um, yeah, um, House and Yachts. Um, they're at a yacht delivery company. Um, they're always looking for unpaid crew for deliveries. Every week, I get emails from them saying, "Need a crew to go from Marbella to wherever." Um, it's all unpaid. But once you've got your day yeah, skipper, that, they will take you. So, that's um, all good. Yeah, Sorry, how do you spell Halcyon? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I'll, put it in, I'll put a link in the, the chat for you if you like. That's really Thank kind of you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, they also run like an apprenticeship scheme, which you can sign up for, because um, they're trying to develop um, delivery skippers for the future. So they I do see. have a program that you can join. Um, it's not formal training per se, but you put with a delivery skipper, you'll do night watches. You're expected to look after the boat unsupervised for several hours at a time. So it's wow. great for building up your yacht master's experience. Brilliant. Just, before we come, just before we come to you, Mike, I'm just thinking, and we've thought of this before, and there were various different issues involved, but it's been a while. Like we have loads of people who have boats and we have loads of people who want to get out more on boats and maybe there's something we can do 
we don't want to make it admin heavy. I think that was the issue before, but something to do to connect people, some kind of a notice board or something, um, which would be could be quite a good good idea. Um, Mike, what did you want to say? Yeah, there's a, a couple of um, places I've been um, looking up. I've either picked up trips or picked up crews from. Um, I would, PYD Deliveries is the other place, along with Halcyon. Uh, it's just PYD, put it into the search engine, you'll find it. Um, you could apply to them and, and again, um, pick up uh, trips uh, as unpaid crew if you've got your... Um, I think they don't necessarily need date skipper. It depends on what the trip is. But I know quite a number of people who've been on their trips and they've worked out quite well. Um, I've got a I, yeah. Ah, okay. And then um when I had I had a quarter share in a boat, and quite often I needed crew short notice for a weekend or the odd day here or there. And I've been a member of there's a um Facebook group, Sailing and Cruise in UK. I'll put the link up in, in a minute. Um, and I've had crew from there, and in fact, some crew that I've met on there, I still sail with. One guy I did all my um, 60 mile legs with, because he was the only one who did the mad things of sailing for 48 hours with me and that sort of thing. Um, and I've met quite a few people through this particular group. But what I'd say um, is there are a lot of dodgy people out there offering to take, especially women, out on their boats. So do be careful which ones you go for. And yeah. go If you do look for a website, um, or a uh, Facebook group, see how long the, the site's been up and running for, and you, you can find out the skippers and the people who are reasonable to go with. Um, so that, you know, that I'd recommend that one. Of all the ones I've looked at over the, the last couple of years, it seems to be the, one of the safer ones. And so I've, I've had really good crew from it, and I've had some really good trips out of it as well. Um, That's really kind. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll put it up on in, in, in a second. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The, the other just before we come is, on to, oh, sorry, go on, Mike. I was going to say there's quite a number of clubs and out there and sort of charities that are always looking for for crew. Um, uh, there's a whole number of them. If you just start, start searching for charity sailing, um, there's all sorts of youth groups, adult groups, and all sorts. And if you if you can lip read, you know, if you can sign at the moment. Um, the, the guys who run a boat for the deaf and the soul are, are looking for crew to help out. Um, so there's another skill you could learn. Ah, brilliant. Sailing. So there you go. Thank you very Thank much. You, Mike. Just before we come on to Chris, just to remind you, we're getting near to eight o'clock. So if there's something you want to follow up, there's the, the link Amy put in a chat box, which is to our um, contact form. So if you want it, or just if you want to email us direct at sailboatproject.org um we can follow up any other sort of queries after this evening as well so don't don't feel you're going to miss out chris what was your um only a, just a quick question i just wondered given you've gone through the breadth of of those courses what sort of time period did people go from say day skipper to coastal to yacht master is it i mean i guess so it, it's yeah it really varies little, but <laughs> yeah it really varies i can talk from my own experience so i i did um I did a day skipper course and then maybe didn't really get much sailing in for about five years, got to the coast um, and got out at weekends a bit, um, Brighton Sailing Club. And then when we got a hold of Carrick, um, that first summer when she was coded, we weren't quite finished with the coding. I basically spent three months in the Solent and just sailed her. We had to have somebody with me for the insurance and just sailed everywhere. I did my yacht master at the end of it, so I didn't and self study. No, I did the coastal skipper theory course. Um, so you know, there's a lot. There are different routes. You don't necessarily need to um, go through all the qualifications as such. I think it's it's kind of practice. Um, you can do the so-called zero to hero and cram everything in in just a few months, but I think um, having time and it's not just the miles like you know you can do a long passage and clock up another thousand miles but a thousand miles on a delivery i don't think gives you anywhere near as much experience as a thousand miles in and out of coastal areas in the solent really um so th there's lots of different routes really um i hope that answers it a little bit chris and the time yeah you know? I... and it depends how much you want to put into it 
how much you you know it's about money as well or the opportunities you find to crew with people I think if you're if you're actively learning and reflecting on it and and really going for it and reading reading lots of different books and people's experiences you know you can move things on, on quite quickly I think but not everyone has that opportunity I recognize that um cool um, well, we're eight o'clock. Do you, do you mind sticking up this other pole? Or should I, can I do it more easily, Amy? Um, I've just been got... trying to, but I'm having a bit of trouble with the pole. So are you able to do it on your yeah. end? Yeah. So I'm going to end the one that we had earlier. So thank you for that. Um, don't need to share the results because we know what people are interested in. And then just sort of want to sort of ask here at the end, um, the... Uh, there we go. There's another little poll just up. How, just how confident you feel now about progressing to your to your next level, really. So I know we've just had a little, it's just been a bit of a chat, but it'd just be kind of um, interesting to see if people feel that they feel a bit clearer about where they're going next, really. Um, we've got a couple of more webinars coming up in this little series. So the next one is on, well, a couple of passage planning ones. So the next one is... Um, focusing on like doing a channel crossing so sort of what would be involved in a passage plan for a channel crossing and then the one afterwards is on more of a kind of coastal or offshore passage so I'm bringing my boat here up from Portugal to the UK and we're hoping on that webinar to be able to share some of our plan for crossing Biscay and coming up home um, so that's what we've got coming up the next couple of ones so I think Unless there's any last questions, Mike just said there in the chat room, he, what did you say there? Six years from day skipper to instructor, was it? Yes, yeah, just a, that was a, a time frame. Um, you know, sailed as a kid, had a 30 year break, came back, bought a boat, caught a share for four years, sailed with a club for a year, and then did my uh, cruise instructor. So it's six years end to end, just for reference. Great. And there's lots of other things you can be doing in life outside of sailing that really help for your sort of skipper skills and instructor skills. Cool. So um, I hope that was useful. Um, and uh, unless there's any last questions, I'm just going to see what we've got here on the... Um, so yeah, we've got people, people saying they're just as confident and... Uh, six people saying they feel more confident so hopefully that's been a useful little session the last hour so thank you everybody and yeah, um do, do contact us direct if you want to chat more about anything thank you finn for your comments no and have a nice evening everybody we'll just leave this up here for a bit if you want to get any of those links down from the chat room yeah thank you thanks very much Digital.